The name of Jesus is greater than any circumstance that you can be encountering. I don't know what you're feeling today, but I know one thing. God it brought you here for a specific purpose. You didn't get up this morning and say, let me go to church because it's the right thing to do. No, the Holy Spirit drew you here. And if you believe the Lord and if you believe that he is with you, I believe that you can encounter Jesus in a way you've never encountered him before. Don't let last Sunday or last Wednesday determine how much Jesus you encounter today. Amen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit of God, because you are here. You are here. You are with us, O oh, Comforter. You are with us, Advocate. You are here to do what you were since the beginning of time you have done, to magnify the Son. We ask today for the revelation of Jesus Christ. We want to see the eyes that burn like fire. We want to see the feet that are as bronze. We want to hear the voice like many waters. We want to hear the voice of many waters be greater than the voice of the adversary in our lives. We say today, great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. The Lord is great and worthy to be praised. The Lord is great and worthy to be praised. There is none like you, Father. You are great. You are great. Father, we pray that Kentucky will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord this morning. We pray that your eyes will search no further than our Father's house. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. And worthy to be praised. Come on, let's worship him.
Father, we lift you up in this room. Come on, can we lift our hands all over the building? Come on, lift your hands all over the building. We join in. We join in with heaven. And we cry holy, holy. Come on, lift your voices. Come on, he's holy. He's holy, he's holy, he's holy. Worthy of me. Is the lamb that was slain, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He has prevailed, and he is found worthy. There's none like you. There's none like you. Come on, somebody say he's worthy. Come on, somebody say he's worthy. Somebody say he's holy. Come on, Jill, sing it. Sing it one more time. And I want to hear your voices. Everyone in the room, come on, let's sing unto him. Come on, let me hear your voices. Jesus. Come on, sing to him. Yes. Come on, church, lift him up. He's holy. So. Let me ask you a question. Where would you be this morning if it were not for His grace and His mercy and His love? You know, He's holy, and I know the scripture says, Be you holy, for I am holy. But do you understand? That when the Father looks at you, He doesn't see all of your mistakes. Somebody should have said right now, thank you, Jesus. But He sees the blood of one who is holy. Amen. He sees that blood. And Blake, that's why, as you prayed last night, that's why we can come to the throne of grace boldly that we may obtain favor and find grace in time of need. Come on, can you praise Him this morning for His grace? Come on, can somebody praise Him for mercy? Come on, can you praise Him for healing? Come on, I dare you to give Him. Come on, can you praise Him for deliverance? I dare you to give him your best praise. No, come on, somebody needs to give him praise in this room. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on, give him. No, come on, we ain't got to. One more time. You need to give him praise. He's Jesus. He's Jesus. He's Jesus. He's Jesus.
love you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your gift that you gave us. We thank you that we are changed. Somebody say, I'm changed. We don't want to just be moved. We want to be changed. Thank you that we're... Wow. We thank you that we're changed. We thank you for your anointing in this room. We thank you for your presence. We love you, Jesus. One more time, can you tell him, say, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord one more time. Amen. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, worship team. You may be seated. We're going to go into the Word this morning. You know, it's, it's so good to see you. Look at your neighbor and say, we're so glad you're here. Uh, do we have any first-time visitors? Anybody? This is your first time at our Father's house. If you Hold your hand up real high. It's your first time. We've got some folks in the back. Uh, you guys got a visitor's card, right? Come on, can we give them a hand, church? We're so glad you're here. Thank you guys for coming. It's good to see you, pal. Hallelujah. Uh, this, this, this brother that's with us this morning, I'm so, I'm so glad he's here. And, uh, and uh, let me tell you, um, you know, I first, I first met Gordon Stacy, and I, I, I feel it necessary to give this introduction. Uh, uh, I first met Gordon Stacy. And you guys, ushers, get, 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 the, get, the, uh, get, the, get, get ready. We're going to receive an offering, or we just can do, the, do the, uh, we, uh, the chest, or do you have bags back there? Um, but uh, anyway, uh, you know, I can tell you when I first heard Gordon Stacy preach, uh, when I first heard Gordon Stacy preach was, was in the year of 1981. And uh, it, was, it was one week after I accepted Christ as my personal Savior, Donnie, Donnie and Lee, as you guys remember this. I got saved on a Tuesday, James, I got saved on a Tuesday night after a youth group, and uh, I just uh, came back to the church, and a friend of mine opened up the church, and we came in and got saved. Randy had gotten saved. He had become a Christian. We say get saved. We became born-again believers, right? He's still saving us every day, right? But uh, I mean, he's glad he's still saving you. I mean, he's glad he saved you today. You'll get that later. But uh, he's saving you every day. Amen? He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved, right? But we're born again, and we're only born again. We're just, we're born again. Amen? But anyway... Uh, Randy became a Christian on uh, the, the week prior, and then that Tuesday I became a Christian. And, uh, and, it, and the next week, the next week, Brian, was, was, was Barberville uh, Youth Camp. And, uh, you know, I was a fresh, young believer, Scott. I was uh, 19 years old. And uh, if you do the math, you'll know my age. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, that week... Gordon Stacy preached every night. He was the guest speaker that week at youth camp, and he preached every night. And, and I drove down there. I had that red 77 Trans Am, the one that hooked Wanda and uh, caused her to become my wife. It was all about the car, Greg. Uh, seriously, I had, I had this one guy in the church, and it wasn't, it wasn't Wanda's father, but when I, got, when I became a Christian, Tammy, I had this one guy in the church, and, and, uh, and he came up to me, and he said, my daughter's sweet on you, but he said, but I think it's your car. But, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, I went down there every, get, hey guys, I'm a brand new believer. I just accepted Jesus. And I went down there every night and heard this guy speak. And I can, t I can tell you to this day some of the stuff that he preached that week at youth camp. And of course, he came to our church at Molas and preached many, many times. And then in our first pastorate at uh, Liberty, when we pastored at Liberty at Molas, uh, Gordon Stacy did our homecoming about every year. And uh, I had him to be our, 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 our Sunday speaker, Saturday night Sunday speaker. But, uh, but I love Gordon Stacy. He's, he's just a super, super great, great man of God and a great friend. And his wife, Hope, uh, they're here from Strawberry Plains, Tennessee. Uh, but uh, just tremendous, tremendous, tremendous man of God. And we're so glad. We went up last night and heard him, heard him preach at Community Harvest. Uh, Pastor David Rice, which is a sister church of ours, and we love them guys so much. And me and David are getting closer and closer. Uh, but uh, but anyway, he preached last night uh, uh, up there, restore the roar. And uh, 
I'm telling you, he wouldn't bother me if he preached. <laughs> you got to preach what's on your heart, but I wouldn't bother me if he preached the same thing this morning. <laughs> Tremendous. Restore the roar. But, but anyway, we're going to receive an offering for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, Gordon and Hope. And, and, and I, almost, I almost, if I know some of you guys wouldn't slip out, I almost would, would rather wait until after he speaks to receive the offering. Because I, honestly, and, and just trust me, trust me on this, uh, I believe you probably would give more after you heard him speak than you will now. Because now it's just a, an offering to you. But after you hear him share, share with us and, and minister. How about this? We're going to take up an offering now and then there will be plates at the door and if you want to give some more on the way out, come on. Amen. Amen. When we, you know, how, many, how many knows you can't outgive God? Who was that said? Who, David said last night up there, he's talking about, you know, uh, using the shovel. You, you just shovel it out and God shovels it in. But you know what he said? He said, God's shovel's bigger than yours. And how many knows the more you give to God, the more he will bless you. So I ask you to just, just, just this morning, I want you to give the best gift you can give. And, and this offering, every part of this offering goes to, every part of this offering goes to our speaker this morning. Uh, Pastor Justin, would you ask, would you bless the offering, please? Amen. Give us unto the Lord. Uh, would you get a couple of you guys, uh, would you get the, uh, get the pulpit down, please? And we're going to put it down there. Uh, and let's get a chair also. We got a chair. Can you, boys, make yourself useful? Thank you, Mr. Green Jeans. Amen. Now, Gordon, I want you to share your heart, and you just you just share whatever you feel like sharing, and and uh, let the Lord use you. And uh, have, have, at this time, could we just we just put our hands together and, and and let's let's make welcome to our pulpit, Gordon Stacy. Thank you. Thank you so much. You may be seated for just a moment. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm telling you, I have really loved and enjoyed the spirit of praise and thanksgiving in this house this morning. And I want you just to continue in that, in that attitude of praise and thanksgiving and all that we do in the remainder of this service, and especially the ministry of the Word of God. I just quoted that this is the day. It's a beautiful Lord's Day, isn't it? This is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know about anybody else, but I will rejoice and be glad in it. How's everybody doing this morning? Blessed? Sleep well, rest well. Last night, I did. I slept like a baby. I was awake every two hours crying, wanting something to eat. <laughs> I slept like a log last night. I rolled and tossed and turned all night. No, that's just a joke, everybody. I, I slept pretty good last night. I uh, woke up. Early this morning, and uh, as some of you probably already know, I do peritoneal dialysis, and uh, that's a dialysis that's done in the stomach cavity, and, and when I go to bed every night, I get hooked up to a machine called a cycler. I have a port or a catheter here in my stomach, and I get hooked up. To that, and I go through five cycles 
during the night. It lasted about nine and a half hours and uh, started waking up real early and went back to sleep for a while and woke up at 8.30. The machine had uh, just gone off because we got started late uh, last night after service. Uh, but I'm feeling good. Just, you know, been off the machine since 8.30. I think that's amazing, Brother Odie. I really do. Uh, what the Lord has been doing for me and through me, uh, able to preach at all and to preach with the anointing and with power and strength, it absolutely is a miracle. It is amazing. But I want to tell you this morning before I go any further, because I feel like somebody needs to hear this, he's still a miracle-working God. This is part of what the Lord has spoken to me to share this morning, but I say again, because there are people that need to be reminded, our God is still a miracle-working God. He still does the miraculous. Go ahead, give him some praise. Give him some love. He's still a God of the supernatural. He's still a God of the miraculous. And I thought I'd wait until maybe a certain time or point in the message but I'm going to say it right now. I said our God is still a God of the miraculous. Do you need a miracle today? Do you need a miracle today? I don't know about anybody else, but I need a miracle every day. I need to know his miracle working power every day of my life. Well, he's still a miracle working God. I believe he's present today. I believe he's here today to show himself strong and to give you the miracle that you need. Now, there are people who would try to tell us, well, there's no such thing as miracles today. Inspiration ceased in 64 AD. Therefore, there are no more miracles no gifts of the Spirit, no healing, none of this. It all ceased. It all ended in 64 A.D. The day of miracles is over. Well, I want to tell you right now that there never was a day of miracles. Well, I got everybody's attention now, don't I? There never was just a day of miracles, and then they ended. But there's always been a God of miracles. And he never changes. I said he never changes. So if he performed the miraculous a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, he never changes. He's still performing miracles today. Clap your hands once again, everybody. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means what he said, he says. Woo. What he did, he does. And what he was, he is. Uh, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost already. I feel like preaching. I feel strength right now that I didn't have when I got up to come over here. That's the God's honest truth. Somebody beside me needed to, to hear that. He's still the God of miracles and the miraculous. So if you need a miracle today. And I'm just going to follow God after preaching for 43 years, 43 plus years. One thing that I've learned and I've always done is follow God. You know, I mean, we can come to church and, and be prepared and pastor, I came prepared today. I believe I had heard from God. But if God in an instance says, 
Let's go this way. I'm going to say, okay, Lord, let's go that way. I don't ever want to be so structured, you know, that I become rigid and can't give God a place where he can move and untouch. Maybe I'm not talking to anybody else, but my own saved and sanctified self today because I need a miracle. There are others that need a miracle. How many would just hold up your hand and be honest enough to say, I need a miracle today, Brother Gordon. I absolutely need a miracle. Well, here's what the Lord is saying to me right now. Don't ever get to the place that you say or feel like, I don't really need the miracle working power of God. I really don't need the miracle working power of God. Don't ever say that. You know why? Because if you ever get to the place where, or if I get to the place where I feel like I don't need a miracle from God, as I said a while ago, I need it every day. Doing dialysis for nine and a half hours, five cycles, I need the Lord's touch. I need his strength. But if I ever get to the place that I feel like I don't need the miracle working power of God, you know what's going to happen? We will get to the place that God will reduce our resources until we do need the miracle working power of God. That was good. I said, if we ever get to the place that we really say or believe, don't need you, God. I don't really, I'm doing good today. I don't really need your miracle working power of God. Then God's going to reduce our resources until we do. Someone say, well, can you show that in the Word? Yeah. Yeah, I can. There was a man by the name of Gideon. How many remember Gideon, the story of Gideon? And Gideon was a man that God had called to bring victory to his people. And Gideon, when God called him, God told him what to do in order to get the number that he needed. You remember how many Gideon started with? Gideon started with 32,000 people. 32,000. Now, if Gideon had defeated the Midianites with 32,000 men, guess who would have got the credit? Gideon would have. He started with 32,000. Woo! Man, I feel... I feel what I'm saying. He started with 32,000. But with God, that was way too many. So God started reducing his resources until he came down to 300 men. From 32,000, now he's got 300 And God says, that's all you need, Gideon. That's more than enough. I want you to give all of those 300 men, I want you to give them three things. Each one of them, three things. He said, I want you to give them a trumpet. I want you to give them a pitcher, a clay pitcher. And I want you to give them a torch or a fire in that pitcher. Oh, my God. The Lord has given it to me faster today, and I can get it out. 300 men gave them each one a trumpet, a clay pitcher, and a light in that clay pitcher. God said, at the same time, I want all 300 men to do the same thing. Number one, 
I want you to blow that trumpet. I want you to sound that trumpet. Then I want you to break that pitcher, break that clay pitcher, and take the light out and shine that light. That's what they did. They took the trumpet, they blew that trumpet, they broke that clay pitcher. How many are willing for God to break your pitcher in order for the light to come forth? How many are willing for God to break your vessel in order for that light to come forth? I feel like prophesying today. Brother Odie, I really do. I feel like preaching. I feel like shouting. I feel like prophesying. I believe I'll do everyone. I prophesy that as the trumpet sounds, as the pitcher is broken, there's going to be a light that will come forth out of every one of us that will absolutely stagger the enemy and bring victory to the people of God. Oh, come on, clap your hands. I found out, listen to this. He had 300 men. But with every one of them sounding a trumpet first, breaking that pitcher and the light shining forth, I read that in armies of that day, there were approximately 1,000 men in a battle, when they were called into a battle for every 1,000 men, there was one who sounded the trumpet and broke the pitcher and let the light shine forth. So, Brother Odie, when the enemy saw the light coming forth from 300 men, the enemy thought they saw 300,000 men. Woo! Isn't that good? Oh, that's good. God knows what he's doing, everybody. He knows exactly what he's doing. So when the enemy looked after hearing the sound of the trumpet, and some people even asked, didn't they, where's that trumpet coming from? Who is that trumpet? Oh, that's Gideon, boys. That's Gideon. He's on the way. And when they saw the light of 300 men, they thought they saw 300,000 Isn't that good? Yeah. Totally different today, isn't it, Hope, from the way I thought it would go. But that's all right. We're hearing from God. You see what I'm saying? If we ever get to the place that we think we don't really need God or his power, his miracles, God's going to reduce your resources. Isn't that good, Pastor? And it's true. He'll do it. He'll reduce them, reduce them, reduce them until you get to the place that you know you need him every day. And you need his miracle working power every day. Folks, God, he don't need a big crowd. All he needs is somebody who will obey his voice. Clap your hands one more time. He don't need a lot of people, Brother James. He just needs somebody who will say, yes, Lord, my soul says yes. He just needs somebody who will obey him. That's all he needs. I'm just going to continue this way. But just to show you, God just needs somebody who will listen to him. He'll just, he just needs somebody who will obey him. And he uses, wonder he can use the most trivial, 
the most minute things to, to accomplish his will. How many believe what I'm saying? Just hold up your hand, wave at me. It, he uses just the smallest things. I talked about Gideon, 300 men defeated the Midianites. Didn't need 32,000. Just needed people who would be obedient. What about Samson? Samson took the jawbone of an ass, took the jawbone of a donkey, and killed a thousand Philistines. A thousand, let that sink in for just a minute. A thousand of the enemy of God with a jawbone? And that's all it was. It was just a jawbone. And it was, there was no flesh left on it. There wasn't anything left, just a jawbone. Something so small as that. As a matter of fact, that jawbone many times was used by a court jester to make the king laugh. That's right. He'd make the king laugh. He'd bring that jawbone and hee-haw, hee-haw, hee-haw to make the king laugh. But he killed a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey. You know what God said to me about this? Never forgot it, Judy. Never forgot what God said. This was years ago. Do you know why God can take something as small, unimportant as the jawbone of a donkey to kill a thousand of the enemies of God? Here it is. Because it was completely dead and there was no flesh left on it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. How many want to be used by God? I ask again, how many want to be used by God? Now more than ever, I want to be used by him. I want to be used by him to bring glory to his name. I want to be used by him to bring victory to the people of God. Well, in order for me to be used by God, I have to be completely dead. And there can't be any flesh left on me. You understand what I'm saying? I want him. I want his miracle work. Stand up, everybody. Stand up and just listen. Lift your hands. Tell him, Lord, use me. I may be small. I may not appear to be much, but you can use me. You can use me, Lord. Mm. Oh, God. I want to completely die, and I want you only, Jesus, you only to come forth and be seen in me and no flesh left on it. Oh, how we need you, Jesus. You may be seated. Can I have just a few more minutes, Pastor? I never, that's just my intro. I never even announce what I'm preaching, but we've already heard from God. And I'm so thankful to be here today because I needed to hear what I've been saying as much as you need it. But I'm going to tell you now, if I had a title for this message, what the Lord had spoken to me is this, that my condition is not my conclusion. That's what God spoke to me. Gone through some dialysis. I was up in my bedroom there by myself. And at that time I was doing also an afternoon dialysis. God spoke to me as clearly as I'm speaking to you right now. And he said, son, your condition is not your conclusion. I needed to hear that. 
And I said, okay, Lord, now show me where. Show me where you get that in your word. And he took me to my favorite verse. He took me to Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. If someone said, of all the verses in the Bible, which one is your favorite? This would be it. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. God said, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil and to give you an expected end. Mm. Wow. I'm telling you, that's enough to stop and jump and shout and dance for about 15 minutes right there. God's thinking about me. I'm in his thoughts. I'm on his mind. He always has my best interest at heart. God said, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. They're thoughts of peace and not of evil and to give you an expected end. My condition is not my conclusion. I believe there are others here this morning that need to hear this word. Your condition is not your conclusion. If you believe it, I want you to say it with me. My condition is not my conclusion. My condition is not my conclusion. Say it with attitude. My condition is not my conclusion. My condition right now is not the way I'm leaving planet earth. I'm telling you, I'm leaving here in a healed body. Hey, I said I'm leaving here in a healed body. I'm not leaving here in a body that has to be hooked up to a machine and do dialysis for nine and a half hours. I'm not leaving that way. I'm leaving here in a healed body. My condition is not my conclusion. This is not... The end for me. Yeah, Brother Gordon, you've been on Dallas five years now. I don't care. I'm not leaving this way. I refuse to. It's not my conclusion. This ain't going to take me out, buddy. I declare that in the name of Jesus. Well, I'm talking to somebody today. Your, con your condition is not your conclusion. Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith. Hey! Whew. I'm telling you, Brother Odie, I am. I'm wanting to shout so bad today, but I'm wanting to preach. Again, I think I'll just do both. I'll just shout while I preach. Listen to what we've already heard. Listen to what God has already said to us. And now he's speaking to us and saying, this condition of mine is not my conclusion. I'm not leaving here the way I am right now. I'm going out of here in a blaze of glory. I'm going out of here with strength that only God can give. My condition, not my conclusion. He is the author and the finisher of my faith, not the devil. I want to tell you something. Hope, whatever God begins, he completes. Boy, you missed a good chance to shout right there. You, you really did. Anything that God starts, he ain't going to let the devil finish. Come on now. Isn't that good news? He's the author and the finisher of my faith. He not only has the final word, Brother Odie, he is the final word, isn't he? So how many are going to believe him when he says, my condition is not my conclusion? I want you to turn to at least two people, would you? Smile at them real big and just tell them, my condition, not my conclusion. It's not my conclusion. The Bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And I believe it. 
I have to believe it because God said it. It's impossible for him to lie. And God said better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. He always saves the best for last. I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. Shout yes, yes, yes. That's so good, I'm going to say it again. I said he always saves the best for last. You ain't seen nothing yet. I feel like prophesying to our father's house today as good as God has been to you and for you individually and collectively I'm going to tell you right now I'm going to stop in the middle of what I'm saying and tell you church you ain't seen nothing yet you ain't seen nothing yet you keep trusting believing in the miracle working power of an almighty God and you ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come. Where's Blake at? Stand up, Blake. He prayed a prayer over me last night. I kept thinking, Lord, that can't be no 16-year-old. He just looks young for his age. But we were talking about it, weren't we, on the way to service today. And Hope said, Gordon, that was one of the most eloquent prayers I believe I ever heard prayed over you. I said, it was. It absolutely was. You know what, folks? We really need to be open to how God wants to move. You know, if, if God wants to speak to me, you know, sometimes... I'm going to say it. Sometimes, especially when we get to the age that I am, and I've been preaching since I was 19 years old, still in college, been preaching now since 1974, 43 years, so if you're trying to Figure out how old I am. I'll be 63 the 7th of next month. But very often it's easy when you feel like you've been around a long time. You know, and I pretty much have seen it all. Can I tell you one thing before I go any further? You ain't seen it all. I don't care how old you are. You've not seen it all. God still has... Boy, if I've ever preached prophetic, it's, it's today, Odie. It really is. Jeremiah 33 and 3, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. We ain't seen it all. We don't know it all. Because God said, I'll show you things that you know not. Well, that's in a present tense, and that simply means that if it was spoken 2,500 years ago, it's still true today. God's still saying, I'll show you something, buddy, you ain't never seen before. Whew. Boy, I'm going to shout today if I have to by myself. But he, 16 years old, I have socks that old. <laughs> but it's easy when you reach our age, my age, and you've been preaching for so long. It's easy for the enemy to slip in and try to tell you, well, how are they going to minister to you? How are they going to, ooh, how many still love Brother Gordon? Not a lot of hands went up. <laughs> I'll never forget one, one time I was preaching in a place where I had a lot of friends in this church, and, and I asked him, I said, how many still love Brother Gordon? And one of our friends, about halfway back on the right side, said, still, still, still love you. They never did love me. 
Oh, with friends like that. But it really is. I just want to be open to any way that God wants to speak. I told Hope that he's 16, and his daddy told me he's been preaching, uh, or his granddaddy, James, said he'd been preaching five years. Told me that last night, didn't you, Brother James? And I said, well, he ain't no rookie then <laughs> if he's been preaching five years. But one thing, Blake, the reason I had you stand up, buddy, is not just because of the prayer that you prayed, but I remember what you said. You said, I want to see miracles happen again. I want to see the miraculous happen again. I want to see the power of God in the church. How many have that desire? That might not have been exact words, but that was the gist of what he said. Well, I'm telling you, You ain't seen nothing yet. God always saves the best for last. If you really believe that, would you clap your hands? So my condition is not my conclusion. This will, I will, I'm, I refuse Absolutely refuse to even entertain the thought of leaving planet Earth in this condition. I will not. I'm going home in a healed body. How many believe healing is for us right now? Brother Odie, I don't have a watch. So I, don't, I don't have a clue what time, what time it is. But if I've ever heard from God, I know I've gone a completely different way, but I have absolutely heard from God. Listen to me, folks. Healing belongs to us right now. Can you say amen? amen. So I, I plan on going to heaven in a healed body, a whole body. Because hope, when I get to heaven, won't need no healing, right? Won't need to be healed then. There's no sickness there. There's no death there. There's no pain there. There's no sorrow there. So I'm going to have my healing now. Won't need it once I get to heaven. And I'm going to close with this. It usually takes me about three or four times to say I'm going to close with this before I, I really close. So this is probably number three. But I'm going to heaven in a healed body. How many believe that Jesus purchased our healing? Hold up your hand, wave it like that. I believe he did. I believe he paid the price. I believe he bought, he purchased my healing. So I just want him to get what he paid for. I just want to get what he paid for. I, I, I want him to have what he paid for. It just wouldn't be right to purchase something and never be able to have it. Well, Jesus purchased my healing. He bought it. Stripes on his back. The wounds on his body. His body was broken that my body might be healed. His body was ripped apart that my body might be made whole. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. And it's true for every one of us. I just want him to get what he paid for. And he bought my healing. My condition is not my conclusion. Folks, you, you really don't understand how strong I am now compared when I came off of that machine this morning. Such strength. 
And I believe God's doing something in my life. I believe he's doing something in my body. Would you stand with me, please? Oh, how we've heard from God. That's, that's my heart too, Blake. I, I want to see as never before, and I've seen a lot of tremendous things happen. Our family is filled with miracle after miracle after miracle. Well, I want to see it again. I'm not saying that it ever stopped because it didn't. He's still a miracle working God. But I want to see. I want to see the glory of God manifested in me and you and in our churches like never before. Do you have that desire to? My condition is not my conclusion. Could I have uh, these great musicians to come back? Brother Odie, I'd like for you to, to come. But how many received something from this message today? Folks, as far as I'm concerned, there is nothing more important than the Word of God. Absolutely nothing. I love His Word. And his word still works. But you have to work it. I feel him settling down upon us right now. I sense his presence. Lord Jesus, I give you praise. I give you honor and glory. and I want my praise to be acceptable to you. I don't want it to be unacceptable. I certainly don't want it to ever be an abomination. But I want my praise to be acceptable to you. And Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are still a God of miracles. I thank you that I'm not going to leave planet Earth in this way because you paid for my healing. Lift up your hands, everybody, and just tell him, Lord Jesus, my condition is not my conclusion. And I am leaving here in a healed body, not a broken body. to you, would you? And I want you to just, just remember some of the things that God spoke to us today. If I've ever had a prophetic anointing, it's today. And you may not remember much of what I've said today, but I want you to always remember and never forget that my condition is not my conclusion. things well, Heavenly Father. You are the perfect worker and you really are the author and the finisher of our faith. And we love you today, Lord. I pray that as we join our hands, we're also joining our faith. We are agreeing together and needs are being met in this moment that you are flowing, you are moving among your people Lord Jesus we will not be satisfied with anything less than what you intend for us we will not thank you thank you for speaking to us today Lift them up to the Lord today. I'm turning it back to your pastor. But Father, I thank you for touching people. I thank you that people's lives are going to be changed for time and for eternity after this service today. Help us to always remember you saved the best for last. 
and we truly ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come. In the name of Jesus. Pastor, come on. I feel like I've done exactly what the Lord would have me to do. And I want I just want to thank you too for the opportunity to be here today. I want to thank you for the love offering that you sent to us. I believe it was last month. I just appreciate the people of God. I don't know what we would have done or or even do without them. But I love you in the Lord. I love Brother Odie. I loved his dad. I love Sister Wanda. I love their family. I love Sister Wanda's mom, Shirley, or Dorothy, rather. I was thinking of another Shirley Eldridge. But uh, her name is Dorothy, and I love her. 